Hey, one of the big buzzwords these days, it's in all arenas everywhere, is influencer. What does it take to be an influencer? What is the traits, the qualities, the DNA of a high-level influencer? Well, today I'm going to give you 10 traits on how to become an influencer. So stick around. Hey, it's a trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back to another Leaders and Communicators. I'm sharing for my 25 years as a motivational speaker, leader, pastor, communicator, because I love helping leaders defy the odds and go to the next level as a communicator and as a leader. As we get going today, we're talking about being an influencer. This is a big, big buzz. I've got a lot of questions coming in about what does it take to be an influencer. People are posting on blogs, or they're doing... YouTube videos, they're doing Twitter accounts, and things are blowing up, and they're becoming influencers. But we're going to break down top 10 reasons, 10 key traits that may help you become an influencer. And as we get in rolling on this today, I'm going to ask you to give me a like, give me a share, give me a comment down below, and give me feedback. Do you like my list? Are there other items that should be on the list? What do you think makes an influencer? i got a couple examples I'm going to share with you today, but first, let's get wrong with number one of our top ten lists. These are in no particular order, by the way, but number one is you're going to be personable. You're going to be authentic. Top ten trait that begins it all is about relationship here. You're going to be one of those people that you're not coming off as a prideful, stuffy, formidable person, and you're going to be very relaxed, casual. You're going to be relationship-driven, even though your vision might be big. You, the call may be massive. You yourself are going to be someone people can warm up to and relate to. They're going to want to be around you. And as an influencer, that's crucial. They feel they know you. That The real you is the you they know, both online and offline. How authentic are you as an influencer? Now, the second one is you're going to be a visionary leader. Now, visionary leadership is about having a high calling. You believe in something bigger than yourself. So you're going to paint a picture. You're going to share something that's worth going to do that maybe has never been done before. Or maybe it's time to elevate something and take it to a new level. And you have a vision to help capture it. The visionary leaders that I'm thinking of on my list and I'm going to share here today all had that ability. They all have the ability to see something beyond themselves, begin the journey, and they bring you along in the adventure of bringing the dream alive. And that's a big part of being an influencer. It's not just having a dream. Can you move people on the line with you to follow you along on where you're taking them? They're doers. The third one on our list is they're doers. Influencers are not people that sit back and say, you know what? You guys are all going to do it for me. I'm just going to sit here and tell you what to do. No. They are the first one to jump in. Their mantra is go. Doers and influencers are part of the big cosmic picture here. They want to influence people, so they want to engage. They want to meet you. They want to be out front. They also want to tell you, we're going here. Join me next Saturday, next Friday. And they influence people by being out in front, leading the way to new territory. Fourth one on my top ten list of what it takes to be an influencer is they're going to be risk takers. Risk taking is a part of being an influencer because you're going to be going places that no one else has gone before. Yes, it's going to take financial investment. Yes, it's going to be doing things differently. It's going to take long hours, preparation. Erwin McManus is a pastor out in California that I greatly admire. Erwin is an influencer, a thought leader. And a lot of what he has taught people and taught me by his books and conferences has been risk is part of leadership. As an influence, people want to see that you believe in your vision. You're not just going to paint a safe one. So risk is part of that. And as a thought leader, as an influencer, you want to say, yes, it's risky. I don't see all of it. But we're going to go do this together. So join me. And the risk is going to be worth the investment to get to the other side. Number five in the top ten list, the halfway point, is there going to be barrier breakers. Influencers cross over lines that people have said you can't do, you shouldn't meet with those people, or we don't go there and do that thing with them. They're barrier breakers because they know this mission, this dream, this vision is bigger than anything else 
So rather than stay in the same lanes and the same paths we always have, these influencers will jump the fence and sit with people of different race, color, creed, religious background, political views, whatever it is. They're not afraid to cross over and break these barriers because they know that influence can only be had when you cross over into new ter territory that people just have not done before. Ask yourself, have you become an influencer? Have you stepped over the line and gone places where people have looked back and said, what the heck are you doing with them? That's a key component of being an influencer. Number six on the top 10 list of being an influencer is creative. You are going to be a creator of things. Things that are unseen, things that are halfway in vision. You have a creative spirit. You want to post, you want a video, you want to do drama, you want to present things in a way that's never been presented because what you want to do is get people excited. You want to captivate their hearts to cast this vision, to take them on an amazing journey. Rick Warren is one of those individuals. Rick Warren is another pastor from California. And Rick Warren has been extremely creative and very personal. Going back to number one, by the way, he was so personal. He wore Hawaiian shirts and let people really get to know Rick Warren. But his creativity of communication was very powerful. And he did church completely different. Completely different. It wasn't one church. It was a bunch of little churches all meeting on the same site. You could be at a beach church one day, a teen church another day, an African-American church another day, all on the same campus. But it was tailored in a different way to meet people's needs. Extremely creative and extremely influential to other people as well. The seventh one is they got to be a great communicator. They have to be a fantastic storyteller. Storytelling is essential to being an influencer. You don't want to just give information. You want to have stories that captivate people's hearts, not just their mind. Data is great, but if you don't have data that has a story, a human element, a great adventure behind it, it's just data. Growing up, my pastor was Fred Finks. I learned so much about storytelling from Fred. He had the Bible and other things come alive so strong through how he taught and led his communication skills were so inspiring and helped me to grow and become a communicator. I remember so many things came out of it. And people thought Fred was an influencer. So much so he went from a small town to a pastor of a church that grew enormously to become the chancellor of a university in Ohio. Big influencer and always, always a storyteller. The eighth one is on the top ten list, you have to have a humble confidence. Influencers are extremely confident of their dream, their mission, their gifts, their talents, of what they bring to the table. They also have a humility behind it all. They don't get pumped up and arrogant and prideful. They don't come off as the know-it-all. They come off as someone who says, I'm going to share what I have, give it to you freely, so we can go do this amazing thing that we're all called in to go do. That influence of confidence and humility is so attractive. People want to know what you believe, why you believe it, where we're going, but you don't need to blow them up doing it. Ask yourself, how confident and humble are you as an influencer? Are you trying to influence by leveraging people, or are you trying to do it by the relationship side? Number nine in the top ten list is going to be responsible. The buck stops here as part of this mantra of being a thought leader, of being an influencer. You are one of those people that it always starts and ends with you. Walt Disney is one of my favorite, favorite thought leader influencers. And the buck always stopped with him. He has great radical dreams, but he always says, it's coming from my head to my team. But in the end, it's on me. The man went bankrupt a couple times. He owned his failures and he owned his successes and celebrated with his people. Amazing influencer. Look at what Disney has done. Took Swampland and made it to the world-class amusement park. Number 10, the final one of the top 10 lists of what it takes to be an influencer is you're going to be trustworthy. All these characters and people that I talked about today, their trust is amazing. 
what they say, how they live, what they do is so trustworthy. People will lean into them and ask, actually want them to influence them. People actually will give permission and they are longing to be influenced because they are so trustworthy. They have so much to fall back on. The history is rich and good. The mission is of high value. The stories are so rich and they are trustworthy individuals. Give me a comment, give me a like, give me a share, anything down below. I would love to hear from you and I will answer each one of those replies personally. Until next time, I'm the Trigger, Rich Bond Trigger. God bless. Have a great week.